What's up everybody? Chris Souter, Slunger Cat Outdoors, back with you again today. Man, this video is allowed to make me seasick. Hopefully the wind is not too terrible on the mic. Um, let me know. Let me know as it goes. We are cranking. I mean, that wind is cranking. But uh, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And I thought, hey, what better place than, uh, than out here in it? Um, hopefully, hopefully that wind don't mess up the video, but I want to finish getting some rods out. I put it, went ahead and put some out uh, a few minutes before we started, but to get started, this is a, a Warrior Cat heavy action. We've got a mix of rods, so I've got the heavies on the outsides, and I've got medium heavies on the inside using eight ounces uh, straight out the back. We got about a mile and a half of current and then I'm using 10 ounces on the outside edges. Um, was able to look out and catch some fresh gizzard chad tonight, so. Let's put one on it, see what happens. Now there's a dandy right there. A little too early. For me to be using him live, but there's a time and a place for baits that big alive. But I got some smaller ones. Take a nice little, this is probably about a six, maybe seven inch shad. And I like hooking them. I like hooking them right just behind the back fin there. Sure you get them scales off. Throw him out there and let him get to work. All right, and I want to thank everybody for joining this afternoon. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunny evening. Only thing wrong about this evening is the wind is blowing horrible, but that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, so hopefully, hopefully you guys got a lot of questions about the wind and uh, you know how to navigate it safely, how to anchor in it safely, how to fish in it safely. But you know, importantly, is how to use it. Uh, to your advantage while fishing tournaments and you know what to actually What to look for where to go how to fish it things like that. So that's what we'll be talking about tonight As you guys are watching the rods, uh, we'll get into those questions. Make sure you guys give me that thumbs up Let me know everything's good to go uh, that you guys can see and hear and all that good stuff We're on the canal river tonight We are uh, we're not too far up the canal river um, you know, it's going to be dark whenever I get, whenever I start heading back toward, uh, Point Pleasant, but, so I didn't want to go too far up here. The waves are, if you can see down there in that corner, well, I know you guys can't see how big they are, but down there in that corner, there's a lot of current going through that corner and a lot of wind coming up river, straight up river. Uh, we got about 20, 25 mile an hour winds coming straight up the canal river and it is creating some nasty nasty waves but uh but you can still fish it you can still fish it you just gotta sometimes you won't be able to you won't be able to fish the places that you want to fish uh, you, you know there's this is probably not this is definitely not my number one pick of where i would fish today uh, but you know using your navionics and using uh Hold on a second, let me get this boat straight. And using the contours of the earth, you know, you can you can find places that are still still fishable and hopefully we'll be able to catch some fish. 
Uh, Johnny Robbins, we got about a mile and a half of current right now coming down the Canal River. And it's really not that much higher above normal than uh, than what I would expect. You might be might be a foot or two, uh, but that's about it. Yeah, Harley, there's uh, some major rollers, major major rollers on the uh, uh, on the High River and the Canal River. You know where the river widens out, and you get uh, wide open spaces. That's the worst. I I don't know how big they were, but uh, but they were definitely. Uh, kind of make you slow down uh, we're using an anchor and that is that is one of the most important things uh, when it you know for me uh, when it comes to fishing in the wind is having a good anchor um, you're gonna you know I've got two uh, fairly large drift socks out the back they're like 40 uh, 42 inches I want to think so you know having a good good anchor that holds in the front um, you know, putting out over you know 100 foot of line, making sure that you have that good ratio of of, of line out to uh, let your anchor be pulled down into whatever you're fishing, and and that's going to help hold you steady, you know, in that wind. Uh, so first, you know, when playing the wind on the river, like I was saying, we can't, you know, you. You're not going to be able to fish your prime spots you know I'm, i would like to fish some stuff that's out in the middle of the river or towards the middle of the channel um you know on those ledges and or creek mouths outside bends things like that but you know unfortunately with the wind blowing straight up river it's just not you know favorable for that kind of uh kind of fishing so so we're going to tuck into the bank real close uh, we're still in about uh, we're still in about 25 foot of water right here where we're at uh, which is plenty deep enough i mean uh you know with the current we have and the warm days we've been having it wouldn't surprise me if these fish were up a little bit more shallow anyway so uh so that's a little bit of uh something to our advantage that's going to help us out a little bit something else that that i like to that i want to mention too is you know when the boat is moving a lot especially for flatheads I like to have a rod that is is softer you know a, a more gentle rod that way my bait is not getting jerked around as much uh, Doug yeah so you know a lot of that anchor, the amount of anchor rope that you put out, you know, versus how deep you are, um, for me, plays a lot on how much current. Um, you know, if there's a whole, whole lot of current, then, then you definitely want to put more, you know, more line out. Uh, the more line, the better the chances you're going to be able to hold. As your boat moves back and forth, it's not going to want to... Uh, you know, pop your anchor loose or start sliding you down the river. So, but a three to one is definitely a good ratio to start at. But, but I always try to put like a minimum of a hundred foot out no matter what, unless I just absolutely can't. Now I've seen a question on here about spot lock. Um, and if I ever use it, uh, you know, I guess kind of my thoughts on spot lock. I think there's a time and a place for it, uh, especially while drifting, vertical drifting. You know, I'll use spot lock a lot. I'll be drifting down the river. Maybe I'm not getting a bite, getting bites or anything, but the fish are coming up in my lines. You know, I've already tried, you know, moving faster. Then, you know, maybe I might slow it down or even stop the boat give them five, 10 minutes, and then if nothing happens, keep moving around. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, anchor fishing or flathead fishing, me personally, you know, I, I can't, I, I gotta throw that anchor. You know, I feel very, very confident in that anchor. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit more time, um, you know, pulling it up and it's a lot, a little bit more work, but 
I feel like I stay more sturdy uh, on anchor than I would for spot lock. I was looking at them rods in the phone and I got a, thought I got a bite back there. And we're getting a pretty good crowd on here tonight. I want to thank you guys. Last uh, last week we had a really, really, really good crowd on here. And, uh, you know, it was uh, very, very fortunate. Shared a lot of information and I and, uh, want to hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to put, up, put some fish on here. Yeah, Harley, I got, uh, I got Snickers. Snickers bars out there, Harley. Uh, catfishing with Cahoon. That is a very, very, very good question. So, stand right here, hopefully. Some of that went off that mic. So, when it comes to how far I am away from the object that I'm fishing, it's my rule of thumb, it's whatever like a good easy cast is for you. Uh, for me, I will go use my sonar, go above the tree or object that I want to fish, about two, 220 feet, drop my anchor, put out you know the amount of rope I want, and then normally I end up about 75 feet from my boat to the point that I marked on my sonar that I'm wanting to fish. And you know, to me, that's a good, easy cast. I can cast right out in front, fan my baits around it, um, you know, out in front of it, inside of it, things like that. And I think, you know, to me, okay, somebody asked a question 50 times, but I didn't see what it was. So if you, if you can, uh, Can you eat flathead cats? Uh, you can. Um, me personally, you know, I, I'll i eat channel cats, uh, but that's about it. You know, I, I really highly promote you guys to do CPR, especially on your bigger fish. Um, if you want to eat something, you know, you can. Uh, you know, I have eaten a flat, small flathead before. They're, they're good eating. But, you know, if you're going to do it, please release the bigger ones, you know, practice that CPR and eat the small ones and just keep what you guys need uh, to eat or to feed your family, you know, whatever you may be doing. Watch that center rod right, right there. I put a nice big live gizzard chat on there cut the tail let him bleed a little bit and we're fishing a what we got behind us is and this is something that you guys will learn you know on times days like today when it's real nasty and you gotta find those areas to get out and and just to be able to fish you know we had to find an area out of the wind close to the bank we still got good depth and i actually found something behind me that i never knew was there and it's a tree on a small little hump, uh, you know. So I'm, I'm kind of eager to see if we pull anything out of here this evening. I got high hopes, but uh, as you guys can see, it is, it's cold. We had a pretty good cold front come through, so we'll see what happens. Actually, the water, the water in the river has dropped a few degrees. We went from, uh, you know, I think it was like 57 degrees here the other day to now it's down to 54. Yeah. Now, if you're looking for fish to eat, you know, I, uh, right now, crappie are on fire, and I absolutely love crappie. Crappie to me is a extremely, extremely good eating fish. Walleye, but I don't live anywhere around that really has a whole bunch of walleye. Now, Hagen, that that surprises me. Uh, Hagen saying that the river down his way is 51 degrees. I would have thought that the uh, your water temperature would have been a little bit warmer than that. 
hopefully the skipjack will start running here before long. It's uh, you know, we're at middle of April, so they ought to be they ought to be coming around pretty good. I would say the Greenup Dam and Robert Seabird Dam and places like that ought to start producing some skipjack here pretty soon. I haven't been haven't been down to the Greenup Dam uh, this week, but. But I would say, I would say once it, you know, straightens up a little bit, we'll be able to go down there and catch some. Uh, somebody was asking about the boat. So this boat here is a, this is a Tracker Tarka a DP. Ooh, what's a little dippy on the ears? It's got a, as you guys can kind of see behind me. Oh, got a bike. Wind's pushing the boat around. As you can see, watch that motor back there. You can kind of see it turn. And uh, that's something else you guys can use to your advantage when you're in a current like this, uh, big windy situations, is if you notice the rods are kind of, the wind's kind of wanting to sweep us to the bank. We can cut that motor out, out a little bit and it'll, the current will naturally they kind of want to bring the back of the boat out into the middle of the river. Woo, wow. Uh, Randy, you know, good question. You know, when we're talking about freezing skipjack, you can definitely freeze skipjack. Um, and I, I would highly you know, recommend if you plan on using a lot of skipjack during the uh, summertime to put a few, you know, in your freezer and uh, freeze them up. I like to just, I don't keep a whole bunch. You know, I usually, I usually keep maybe a hundred in my freezer, uh, you know, for throughout the winter for times whenever I can't get above you know, or get any fresh. Um, I don't like that. I try not to take too many, uh, especially in the springtime whenever they're breeding. A good question, Johnny. Johnny, you know, what I would prefer to start out is put my hood up here you know um, on down river there is some great mountain and uh, things like that that are on the outside bends of turns um, they've got some nice you know they got some nice uh, drop-offs a lot of structure a lot of bait you know getting washed out of that creek this time of year and, and a lot of those fish, if they're feeding, will kind of conjugate in those areas. Uh, so I, that's what I would like to be fishing. It's not necessarily the middle of the river, but um, there's a lot of areas that I would like to be fishing that are directly in the wind. And, but unfortunately, you know, we can't do that. We, we could, it would just be extremely dangerous and, and not fun at all. Uh, you know, in conditions like this. Uh, Nicholas James, no, this is actually, the boat I'm fishing on right now is actually my dad's boat. It's the boat that I started uh, fishing on you know, fishing tournaments on uh, years and years ago, and then my dad got it. You know, bought it for me, and he put a new, uh, a new motor on it, and done some things to it, fixed it up a little bit. But uh, unfortunately, Sea Ark has closed their shop for right now until they get the virus stuff under, under wraps, and uh, you know, 
hopefully whenever they get it under wraps we can get get the new one and says will chris will chris lose the drift sock tonight uh <laughs> i hope not i hope not i got one stuck in the prop the other day coming up the river and one blew out and went right in the prop and killed the motor and everything uh, good question larry uh you know, Larry asks a question about if I was fishing a tournament, and that's a very good question. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, would I be fishing here, or would I be fishing the stuff that I wanted to fish out in the middle of the river? So, in a tournament situation, you know, you've got to think of different things to think about. One, time, uh, the, time the amount of time that your baits are in the water, but also the amount of time that you're fishing, you're able to fish the way that you want to uh, and be confident that you're fishing and placing those baits where those fish are at, uh, if that makes sense. So, you know, in situations like this, if I could safely, uh, you know, fish out there, which I don't think you would really want to, um, then yeah, I would. But my answer to that question would I would be doing the same thing that I'm doing right now. I would find places that, uh, that I can actually fish productively and just hammer out those spots, you know, hammer out those places. You're going to be, to me, uh, <laughs> there is one on the mic. Somebody asked about putting a cat head on the, on the mic. There is one on there. I'll put that on there, hopefully. Hopefully that'll help. Let me know if it did or not. So... All right, let's see if we can get it any better now. Well, I tell you, in the wind and uh, weather and conditions like this, it can be it can be challenging. I tell you. So let's uh, it, it probably got a little bit better because the the wind died down for just a second but we was talking about you know somebody asked the question about what's the key or trick to anchoring in the wind uh, one of the biggest things that you want to remember is whenever you're you're going up to drop that anchor is to try to do things uh, fairly quick um, don't don't let your boat start turning on you go straight up get your boat going in reverse as quickly as you can try to keep your boat as straight as you can drop that anchor and then get your boat moving backwards and have everything you know ready to go uh, so that whenever you're ready to drop that anchor you don't have to fumble around or fool around you can just go and and drop it and get right back to what you was needing to do
I got, so for all you guys watching tonight, I have a huge, I'm gonna do a giveaway tomorrow. It's gonna be on the Slunger Cat page. So if you guys are not uh, following the Slunger Cat page, make sure that you do. In the morning, I'm gonna write it up and we're gonna actually give away one of the Warrior Cat uh, rods on the Slunger Cat page. Uh, it'll probably run for the next few days or maybe week, not sure yet, but uh, make sure you guys get signed up for that as well. We're not doing the number thing. Not tonight. Uh, favorite time to fish. You know, really, my favorite time to fish is from now until the end, like uh, end of May, 1st of June. Um, I really like this time. Second would probably be November, uh, end of October, end of November, through November. And uh, third would be probably middle of the winter uh, when there's nobody out here fishing. Uh, somebody asked, did I fish with it? No, no, uh, I'll give, I'm gonna be giving a new one away unless somebody wants it. Wow. <laughs> that wind just started cranking. My goodness, I might hold the tripod down. Uh, good question, Roger. You know, uh, in current like this, when I'm anchored, uh, would I use planter boards to, you know, keep the lines separated? No, I wouldn't. Uh, that's one of the main reasons that, that I use bigger leads. You know, a lot of people ask me, uh, why do I use such heavy weight? And that is that reason. If I throw, you know, if I need to throw 12, 14 ounces um, out to the side of the boat to keep that out to the side of the boat, then that's what I want to do. Oh, Joe. Joe Granada. That's a good question, buddy. Man, you want to talk about putting somebody on the spot. This lad just put me on the spot now. So, Joe... Joe's question was, do I think that the wind uh, affects the way the shad, shad patterns, shad, you know, what they're doing, uh, things like that, and absolutely, absolutely do. Uh, if, if anybody fishes lakes, you know, you'll, or you, when you go to catch bait, pay attention to the wind. Um, you know, the the shad and bait, a lot of everything will get pushed with the wind a lot of times to one side or the other. Uh, and that can play a big key in finding bait. So there you go, Joe, it, it definitely plays a big key, a big part of, of that. Diet Pepsi, Doc. That's good for the heart, I hear. John Miller um, I've never heard of uh, Cisco rod holders but uh, no I probably will I'll probably uh, stick with monsters um, I've had to be honest with you the only other rod holders I've used drift masters uh, my dad actually has a few drift masters on this boat uh, I've used the Atwood plastic ones um, but I really like the 035 uh, monster rod holders. They really, you know, they just fit my style of fishing. Um, whenever I'm sitting in a sitting in the boat, they're not real, uh, real steep, real, you know, it's got a nice angle to it. And that's just, you know, me personally. Yeah, uh, Darren, I did. I, I throwed. <clears throat> you can't tell where the, where the boat has been moving back and forth. Um, some of my lines actually have a little bit of slack, uh, quite a bit of slack in them from moving around. And on a normal basis, I would be up there kind of keeping up the slack. But I got 
let's see, this one here, it doesn't look like it, but it is um, over towards the bank. And then this one right there is casted. I casted it as hard as I could straight out in the middle. And what has happened is it is sweeped back to where the channel has ledge has come over. Now, where we are on the, we would actually be on the inside bend of this turn, there's not such a steep ledge. So it could, it is actually swept over farther uh, than what it would normally uh, do. Yeah, Hagen, you got that right, buddy. It's, it's hard to beat them. Uh, Stony fly, I'm using, um, I'm using eights, eight ounce sinkers straight out the back. And then I'm using tens on, on the corner rods. And I probably, uh, the way, the way things are, are moving around, I, I could have probably went with tens in the middle and 12s on the outside. Now somebody asked, uh, somebody asked about making my own sinkers. Yeah, I make a lot of my own sinkers. Um, it's, I'm fortunate enough to know a lot of people in construction and stuff and I can usually pick up some lead pretty easy. If you guys can find somebody that's working a hospital that can get x-ray x-ray room lead, that is some of the best uh, lead that you can get. It's super soft, real clean, a heck of a lot better than like wheel weights and, and uh, battery lead, which I don't recommend you guys using battery uh, lead. That's pretty nasty stuff. <laughs> Doc, that's right. Whew. Man, I wish I wish we'd get a fish on here. I need to get warmed up. I mean, it won't be long now. I'm, I've been saying this, uh, saying this for a couple weeks, but man, that that temperature and that that weather and stuff. If we could just get, if we could just get to, through the next couple weeks. It's going to be flathead season, I'm telling you. A couple weeks ago, I was out here on a Tuesday and done pretty good and got me fired up and anxious. And, and uh, But uh, it's, it's real close. Uh, Randy, you know, uh, that's a good question. And, and the Canal River is a really, really good river. I, I really like to fish it. But is it better than Ohio? I think I think to answer that it, it's kind of depending on the day. Uh, you know, it seems like the flatheads, the flathead bite picks up quicker in in the Canal River um, than it does in Ohio. Usually, usually you can start uh, catching them here about a week or so before, really good before out there uh, and then you know as it progresses the Ohio River uh, kind of gets better in my opinion you know what I mean and the Canal River can be a little bit easier to fish as well uh, you know it's it's a little bit smaller a little bit more narrow things like that Uh, Hidden River Fishing, uh, thanks for watching tonight, buddy. And uh, tell your oldest daughter, I said congratulations on the uh, on the fish. That's awesome. Uh, Mark, better bait population. Um, man, that's a that's a good question, and I, and I think both of them really have good uh, bait populations. Um, I would have to say it's a toss-up, you know, as far as bait goes. Uh, bait seems to be easier to catch in Ohio, most generally. But uh, but the Canal River definitely has good bait population. 
Um, I know on up on up river, uh, the Canal River can be some of the best moon eye fishing you ever you know ever seen. Uh, but the High River has some really good moon eye fishing in it as well. Um, they catch skipjack up at uh, Winfield, Moon Eye Winfield. Uh, good gizzard chat population up there. Hey Clarence, Callie, hi. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, take care, take care of mama. Uh, Mike, so it's, I wouldn't say it's like the Green River. Um, I've been on the Green River and at, it's definitely not, not real deep. Uh, we got areas on the Canal River that get into the 40s and you know, 40-ish, maybe hit 50, um, but but it, I wouldn't say it's like the Green River. Um, the parts of the Green River I have fished are a lot smaller than what this would be. Uh, the Canal River uh, can be kind of wide in places, but narrow in others. Yeah, uh, Roger, if you've never fished the went above Winfield area, um, it gets fished a lot. There's a lot of people up there that fish. It's kind of like the Point Pleasant area. You know, it gets fished and hammered a lot, but it's a lot of good fishing. Uh, some really good fishing. Man, I was really hoping we'd have a fish on by now. I'm really disappointed. Uh, Hagen, you know, when it comes to moon eye, you know, absolutely you can start catching them. Uh, you know, actually I will start catching them before skipjack uh, at times. But, but to be honest, I normally don't. Um, I, I have a thing with, with confidence and it, it just, uh, moon eye have not done it for me early season. Not saying you can't catch them with moon eye, but uh, I know some people that live and die by moon eye, especially in early season. But me personally, you know, I like uh, like that late summertime for moon eye. But should be able to right now. If you're catching a skipjack, I would say, Hagen, it, you ought to try floating some crickets uh, for for moon eye. Wherever you're catching skipjack, uh, try to float some crickets and you'll probably catch them. Favorite river system. So, when it comes to yeah, John, I would say that my you know favorite river system would probably be it. it it'd be a toss up. It'd be a toss up between uh, the Mississippi River or uh, the Tennessee River. You know, I, I really like the Tennessee River. I know it gets hit hard. Um, but I think the reason I like the Mississippi so much is because it changes. It's, it's an ever-changing fishery. It's, uh, it's an ever-changing style of fishing. You're constantly moving, bumping. Uh, uh, you can catch fish on the Mississippi doing many different techniques, and, and it's a challenge. It's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a challenge every time you go out there on the Mississippi and fish. So I would say that'd probably be my uh, my favorite. Now, when it comes to flathead fishing, you know it's hard to beat the West Virginia waters um, of the High River and Canal River areas uh, for flatheads, and and the Tennessee. You know, Tennessee is really good for flatheads as well. But you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to have this right here in my backyard. Well, unfortunately, looks like we're getting the big old skunkaroo. Uh, today uh, we've been on here for around 40 minutes and not a single taker of anything fresh cut gizzard shad was not what they was wanting today but hey hopefully you guys learned something about fishing the wind um, if you guys come out here and you guys are going to try to tackle this wind make sure that you're careful 
uh, take your time don't get in a big hurry it can be very very dangerous and uh, just use use your common sense uh, whenever you're doing it and if you're out here you know use that pdf wear that thing especially when you're on the go so till next week i want to thank you guys make sure you guys watch uh slender cat page tomorrow um i'll be posting that probably tomorrow morning sometime uh before work and let you guys start getting signed up for that and doing everything we can do uh, for you guys so hopefully you guys do well as always if you need me to pray for you or if you'd like to talk uh, more about uh, my lord and savior let me know i want to thank you guys for watching tonight and we will catch you guys next week